Hey, welcome. This is the Mayo Clinic Simulation Center in Rochester, Minnesota. I'm Dr. David Farley. I'm a general surgeon and I'd like to show you what we think is a best practice here at the Mayo Clinic. What we're pretty good at is evaluating surgical residents very inexpensively. To tell you what I mean, I'm going to come in here and show you that we have a variety of tests and basically have about 25 different tests depending if you're an intern or a chief or a PGY3, how we can assess your skills. And based on that assessment, we can give you feedback and then remediate or fantastic onto the next level. Or no, we need to stop and take a look. Let's take a look at the screen here for a second. It's a simple little PowerPoint that I ask all of our trainees to come in and tell me about some images. They only get 60 seconds on a slide. So let's take a look at it. Verbalize pertinent facts. I've got my little score sheet here. I got about 10 or 12 things that I'd like to have written down. I sit in the clipboard behind them and they verbalize and say PA chest x-ray performed April 21st 2004 trachea looks midline clavicles are normal yada 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 can they see that there's a lung cancer in the left lung it's a variety of things I'm looking for with this x-ray here comes a CT scan for those x-ray experts can tell yep that's the liver but it's also segment five I'm looking for great answers from great trainees do they know that that's the descending colon this is a simple little PowerPoint, but there is no subjectivity here. That is the stomach. It's either yes or no. And at the end of a training session for imaging, I can tell you this person really knows what they're talking about. The other two, not so much. I'd like you to take you to the next station. Let's see what they have to offer there. So the Sim Center's got 10,000 square feet, and we've got a bunch of different rooms. And in this room, a couple simplistic things. I've got a blank piece of paper that basically asks the trainee to draw the pelvic anatomy. So this is the bladder. Aha! Uh -huh. If I was taking this test, what does the bladder look like from the umbilicus? And I got to draw the anatomy like I was doing a tep hernia repair. So the pubis is there. The rectus abdominis muscles are there. There must be iliac vein, external iliac artery, epigastric vessels, artery and vein, usually two veins. This would be Hesselbach's triangle here. This is where a direct hernia would be. Might be an obturator hernia there. To the left, we might have a direct hernia through the internal ring. What goes through that? Well, the vas deferens goes through that. The gonadal vein goes through that. We've got some nerves out here. We've got the lateral femoral cutaneous, the ilioinguinal, and the genital branch of the genital femoral goes through there. Transversalis muscle. That's 25. If they can do that, that's a top-notch score. I'm impressed. They only get a couple minutes to draw that. Time to move on. This funny little piece of fabric costs about three cents. Takes us about a minute to make. This is a skin, an ellipse of uh, skin is out of there, and this is a mastectomy, a simple mastectomy. This is a completed little project. What they're asked to do is make an incision and insert a drain. We have our own particular ways of doing things here at the Mayo Clinic. Cutting a certain edge, putting it in a certain depth. I can see there's two dots. What do those two dots mean? Ah, 10 centimeters to the first hole. We want those holes inside. So there's a lot of different ways to do things, but we have our own scoring system. Can they do it right? We've got the scoring thing. And ideally, what we'd like to do over the course of time now is they understand the scoring system. They have the gadgetry to do this. They could practice this at home. We also have on Blackboard or online videos that tell them exactly what to do. Let's check the next station out. So this is our next station. Again, we've drawn the anatomy of the pelvis. We put in a drain for the mastectomy, and now we're going to close the fascia. This is a midline laparotomy. Looks like it's been completed. How far back do you take your bites? How far do you advance with each bites? We have a measuring tool, and it's a simple little thing. Again, it's not too tough. It's a check mark. It's a box, but it's very objective. So if it's a handsome man or a heavy set woman, we don't get into that. We get into objective criteria and do they know what they're doing? And the better thing is we test them and let them know, hey, you're doing it great or you need some work on this. Let's look online. Let's take these things home. We can practice. You can do it in the Sim Center, but it doesn't have to be done here. These are simple little tools. Again, this may cost 10 cents total. Let's check a couple other items. So station number three, 15 minutes each station. And um, I'm a little bit embarrassed here. I've got to do FLS, it looks like. And so we don't do all five criteria for FLS, but all the training program directors know what we're talking about. 
we can do a laparoscopic knot tying with two hands. Hopefully I can do this in less than 30 or 40 seconds. All right. What else can we do? We can do the peg transfer. We can cut out circles and invariably in 15 minutes, no matter who the trainees are, we can get that done. And then we can give feedback and we measure outside the circle. How well did they do? We measure the time they did it. We look at the knots. Are they secure? Are they air knots? 15 minutes gives us a pretty good sense whether these people are going to pass the FLS and be ready for board certification. Okay, station number four. Today we're doing PGY2 session. For this station, there's three different things. Got a simple little piece of fabric. I go to Joanne Fabric, but there's a lot of other places, Walmart and others that sell it. Here they've got to do five things, I think. They've got to do an interrupted stitch. They've got to do a figure of eight. They've got to do a sub Q. And uh, they've got to go to a vertical mattress. I can see that. And we grade them. We've got some simple criteria, simple scores, 10 points. Most of our trainees that are PGY2s get an 8, 9, or a 10 on this. They know what they're doing. This takes about 60 seconds, a couple minutes for them to do. 15 minutes. We've got to be done. And I'm going to move over here. And what we're, they're going to do here is make an incision. Find the top of the rib, pop the rib in, put the chest tube in, and then either sew it in place or just put in the chest tube in and tell us what they're doing. Every level is different. When we're interns, I make them sew it in and do the whole thing. If they're a third year and I'm looking for certain skills, I may only ask them to pop it in and then verbalize it. I know that they can tie a knot and sew the uh, tube in place. This usually takes a couple minutes for them to do. This is one of our higher tech stations. This is a uh, blue phantom, if you will. And we're going to put a central line in. Um, Dr. Rouse here is showing me that he's got the probe on the skin and putting the needle in. And we've got 10-point criteria. He's supposed to talk it through, tell me what's uh, relevant. He's got to make sure the vessels are oriented. He's got to carefully put the needle in and not back wall through the right IJ. And then as he's doing this, he's supposed to, in 30 seconds, get the tip in the IJ. And with the ultrasound, show me that it's in the IJ. So this is kind of a demanding, quick-hitting thing that at the end of 15 minutes, I know what they're doing. I got one more station to show you. Station 5. We're finally to the end. 75 minutes, and we've got three things here. Jeopardy questions. I give about 40 questions. They've got about five seconds to answer. What is the tubercle of Zucker candle? Ah, that's that little thyroid bump by the genu of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Lots of questions. A lot of hard questions, a lot of easy ones. I want to know what our PGY2s know. I got this model here. Again, I use a lot of fabric and I'm into it. And I asked them, demonstrate the anatomy of the human groin in a male. Okay, so if that's true, the anatomy, I got the pubis here, the symphysis pubis, Cooper's ligaments. I got some blood vessels going over the top. There's an iliac vein. There's an iliac artery. I've got, um, let's say I put some peritoneum down. And then I must have multiple layers. Ah, that could be the external oblique, or that could be the transverse salus. Oops, there's a hole here. Must be an internal ring. Oh, that's right. There's a spermatic cord that's going to need to go through that. Does it go through the internal, the external, the transverse salus? How do I put these things together? Then there's fatty tissue. There's scarpa's fascia. There's preperitoneal or camper's fascia. And then maybe there's skin on top. How did I do? Probably not so good. Our scoring system would suggest you need to use all of these other tools here and let us know where the anterior superior iliac spine is, epigastric vessels, and the like. Simple little system. I send out a note to the trainees. This is what I'm looking for. You get a point for saying this each time. Last thing over here, this is our fine needle aspiration demonstration. Looks like I got a man with a chin. There's the sternal notch. I got two collarbones. Aha! I feel the collarbone there. There's a mass. Son of a gun. I need to do an FNA. We've got a simple little criteria. I want to palpate this. I want to sterilize it and feel it. Tell the patient it's a skinny little needle. We're not going to numb it up. Stick it into the node. Aspirate back. And a bunch of criteria. I'm hopeful that I've shown you that in 75 minutes, five different stations, I've got about 15 different data points. Looking at knowledge and judgment. Looking at technical skills. Some of these stations are difficult for our trainees. Some of them are a piece of cake. I'd like to know that. The important thing for us at Mayo, as we've done these X Games over the last half dozen years, is we found out some stations every trainee does poorly. That's a problem with our program. We've got a station for melanoma. Our people don't treat that that much here. We've worked harder. I see the scores improving over time. There are some stations where 
Eight of our 10 category residents are top-notch staff performance. Two aren't. I'm not going to waste my time with eight. They know what they're talking about. It's the two people that need to remediate. And so on Friday afternoons, we have them come in and play with the models, or we can do it in a cadaver or a pig lab. But most of the things that we're doing here is on cheap fabric models that are easy to make. I hope this is a benefit to you. We think it's a best practice in some respects. It's cheap. It's fast. It's objective. We do it twice a year. Our residents have started out hating this and stressing over it. I'm hopeful over the next year they come in here with some swagger and proven to us that they've got the scoring sheet, they've gotten to practice on it, they can look online and see what the answers are, how Dr. Farley wants it done, and come in here and prove it to us. I'll feel better about our trainees when we graduate them.